Welcome back to Beyond the Headline, everyone. I am so, so excited that you're on the show today because I'm here with the founder and CEO of Gannett, Dr. Asaf Glazer. Asaf, thank you for being here. Thank you for uh, having me. I'd love to start out with the incredible product that your team has built for families. Can you introduce us to Nanit? So Nanit is actually the first consumer camera that uh, classified behaviors. Um, we are actually measure sleep and tracking caregiver interactions using a camera and only a camera. Um, in the last uh, 15 years or so, I've been working on how to make camera smart. Um, made my PhD at the Technion and uh, machine learning computer vision later a postdoc at Cornell University. And uh, when I, uh, during my studies, I had my first kid and ask myself, okay, uh, I want to know my kids better, let's buy a camera, and then find that most of the cameras on the market are pretty dumb, not secure, not reliable, um, and uh, here is Nanit uh, that can give you much more information than existing cameras. Can you give us an example of how a family would use Nanit? Yeah, um, first let's talk about what then it is uh, providing. So uh, we, we measure sleep and caregiver interaction. Uh, sleep is important for parents. Uh, it's important for kids. It's one of the leading factor in, in, in the baby health and, and development. Um, just as statistics, parents on average lost around 44 days of sleep a year. Um, That's not right. <laughs> Three out of ten parents reporting that their kid had a sleep problems. All parents are dealing with their, you know, the challenge of putting their kid to sleep. Um, and we came into this point with providing parents with uh, a morning brief insight into their sleep or their kid uh, with four scientific measures that we are providing. Uh, the first one is total sleep time, number of hours that your kid slept during the night. Uh, the second one is uh, visits, how many times you visit your kid during the night. The third one is sleep onset, how much time it took your kid to fall asleep. And the fourth one is that sleep quality. What is the percentage of the time that your kid was asleep in his crib uh, out of the time that he spent in his crib? Um, we provide all this information together with a, a time-lapse video that having a summary of what happened with your kid and also a sleep score that we are pretty proud, proud of um, that you can track over time uh, uh, how is your kid um, and uh, we, we integrate sleep recommendation and notes for parents uh, more and more over time like your baby slept this week better than the week before um, and so on. I think that stuff is so interesting to, granted, I'm not a parent, but one of the features I thought was fantastic is you can measure how long it takes a baby to fall back yeah. to sleep without intervention. That's huge for parents who have not been sleeping. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it reminds me that in one of the early um, experiments that we've done, we're, we're working with sleep scientists. So it's computer vision machine learning, but also existing art and literature on sleep science. Uh, so one of the advisors we are working with um, uh, told me a story that, uh, you know, they put a camera in a room that looks at the crib and there was a kid that was asleep, uh, was trying to sleep inside the crib, uh, but he didn't want to sleep. So he was crying, hanging on the bars, didn't want to sleep and the parents waited outside. Uh, it is called the Ferber method. I don't know if you heard about it, but you're supposed to let your kid fall asleep. Um, and he didn't want to sleep. Uh, he take the pacifier, throw it to the other side of their room, doesn't want to Aggression. sleep. Then, same kid, at the same night, and he wake up during the night, take the pacifier, give it to the teddy bear, put it back to his mouth, and fall asleep. When you show this to your parents, it creates a behavioral change. He is aware of his kid better. It will help him to manage the sleep time and the intervention decisions that he is making on a daily basis. 
Um, so this is one example of how our product can change behavior and lead to better sleep for the kids and of course for, for the parents. Another exciting part too, which I hadn't thought of not being a parent, is you guys are capturing a lot of really special moments. Like maybe yeah. the first time a baby rolls over or stands up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is true. Uh, we are working with beta testers in the last half, one and a half years, uh, around 30 beta testers. And one of them just, um, you know, she sent us a note on Facebook, you know, I watched my kid that is flicking for Sadatai for the first time with nannies. I was looking for this. My, uh, uh, you know, I showed it to my physician and, and we are very, you know, and she had this clip and she showed it to us. Uh, it's very exciting that uh, she was waiting for these milestones and with Nanit we provide her these milestones. Uh, so um, definitely there are many things that you can see, you know, uh, we thought about what is the best way to see your baby. You know, our camera is located in a bird eye view position above the crib. Uh, I guess that you saw it in, in the videos. Um, you do not see your kid behind bars or uh, you do not struggle with mounting solution or with uh, strangulation hazards. We have a really safe design that we provide uh, to parents, but it also allows you to see your kid in the best way. We, we optimize the image sensor, the size of the image sensor for the size of the crib. Uh, so you would, be, you would have the best uh, view of your kid. And uh, actually our hardware also support the algorithm to provide you with the same best information about what happened uh, inside the crib. There's so many areas that I want to dive in, but I think the first way we'll go ahead with is that what you guys are providing is really so much more than a single night of sleep or a year of sleep. One of your investors, Mark Suster from Upfront, was mentioning in his post, he's clearly very excited to be partnering with you guys, that this can help in so many ways, like in the example that you shared with the physician. Yeah. You know, our mission as a company is to expand the boundaries of human observation. And uh, we start with babies. Um, I think that um, when you um, when you are taking the technology that you are having of uh, classifying behaviors and telling what happened with your kid, um, on the research side there are lots of opportunities that uh, we can think of about telling more about uh, human beings and babies, uh, but we can definitely leverage it to other verticals. And, um, and this is not something that we are doing at this moment, uh, but, but our system is today HIPAA compliant. So um, you can feel safe that you are sharing this information or, or uh, uh, tracking the milestones of your kid. And in later stage, we might take it to, to different uh, uh, applications. I want to spend a couple of minutes actually talking about Nanit, the way that you guys designed it. Why is this different than other products on the market? Because there's a couple of wearables out there right now yeah. that do not the same, but similar things. Yeah, you know, wearable is, is a, you know, came to the world um, and parents are aware that there is some tech that can do something, but parents want to sleep and parents won't, don't want to work hard to make, <laughs> you know, to do their job. Uh, they want their camera there, hang there. She will do the job for you. You don't need to wear it. You don't need to wash it. You don't need to charge it. You don't need to make sure that the base is close that. or far. And uh, everything is very uh, reliable. And, and on the we are very research-oriented and uh, responsible for the technology that we are providing uh, with only a camera. Um, and we designed the camera in a way that will we'll blend into the nursery in the best way. You know, our mount is actually, and we have an, a design stand that is actually lying on the wall. It doesn't actually touch the crib. Um, and uh, the parent can put uh, the, the baby without interference um, and so on. And you guys had over, I was reading on the blog, over 200 discussions about the design alone. Yeah, the design is, uh, 
you know, the first thing that I, you know, I had my kid and I was doing those experiments, but then we had to go, you know, I went to a sleeping lab and so, you know, how to measure sleep. So it's not enough to have your computer vision capabilities. But then the next thing that I've made is to land here in uh, New York with a stock of Starbucks cards and starting to talk with parents with cameras, you know, what actually uh, you are worried about uh, with your camera, what are the pros and cons and each, and you are going through a, a design process, a long design process when you come with a, a system that is actually um, I think the dream of every parent, you know, uh, safe, the best image quality, the best sensor, we have uh, course, humidity, temperature, sensor, night light, and I'm not talking about the algorithms, okay? But you have a night light on top of the camera that is not directed, directed to the ceiling, so the kid won't interfere with, uh, uh, won't be disturbed by the night, while the parents still see what happened and turn it on and off uh, when needed. Uh, we designed its height of the mount uh, to be in a way that parents and kids won't be able to reach it when they are standing in the crib. Um, we design uh, the mount in a way that will be universal and can be work in all cribs. And uh, the size of the image sensor, as I tell you, was fit to the size of the uh, crib. And, and also uh, things around, uh, uh, you know, how you actually build the camera together with the analytic capabilities that uh, uh, they will be supported. Uh, this was something, another thing that uh, uh, we have done. Um, and, and there are a lot of design decisions, you know, you take security cameras today, they won't work if there is no internet, you know, and imagine yourself, um, you're sitting in the, um, in the kitchen, the kid is crying upstairs, and because there is no internet, you get no sound and, and motion alerts, so we, we design our system in a way that it will work on the home network in case that the internet is disconnected so you can get the streaming directly from your router and um, those are design thinking decision that can be made if you think you know about your market about parents um, and parents were on our mind uh, you know security uh, every frame is encrypted um, and on safety side um, we are actually the only camera that you can put less than three feet away from the crib uh, just due to strangulation hazards uh, that we solve it with the safe cable management solution that we had. Uh, so this is actually, uh, I think, your number one um, item on your uh, baby registry list, <laughs> I think, uh, in a few months from now. And what was the process like as you share all of those different decisions that you guys were having to make every day for your team bringing this to life? What did it feel like? You know, we, we have an amazing team, you know, on the design side, on the, the tech side, um, on the consumer uh, baby side. Uh, you need to put all of them together and have them to work in harmony to, to, to bring the best insights. And uh, this is a process. It is a process that took us uh, two years. Um, but uh, we you made it we made it yeah did you have you know whether as a team or just for you any aha moments along the way aha moments um, there were aha moments I think that uh, understanding that uh, sleep is the number one measure that you want to go after was a aha moment that was the early beginning uh, with my kid and with others that you know, your kid is there for, you know, 12 to 20 hours a day in the crib. Oh, wow. No one is actually know what happened to him. Yeah, you know what is going on with him. And um, it's okay that I don't know, you know, I can live my life. But if I know something, I can do much more. So, you know, we just... Uh, you know, imagine yourself the first time with Google Maps, you know, you know, just better way to drive from place to place. And the world didn't have it like, I don't know, 10 years ago. Uh, so it has uh, uh, 
Uh, it is kind of a aha moment that you understand how much a parent can do better if mm. you just know those small things that will guide him in which direction he would like to go. How does it feel being a customer for your own product? Uh, I think that they're fortunate to have the first Nanit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that I'm fortunate to be the first <laughs> Nanit user. I had my two kids that uh, I know, uh, you know, it, was, uh, it wasn't at the same level of... Uh, with my first kid, I remember myself uh, tracking on him over, over time. And then uh, I found out that moving 134 times average it meant. Now, we, we still didn't integrate all the sleep sign things inside. And I wanted to, yeah, okay, but what? So now I have much more than this. You know, I know how many hours you actually sleep. I know to differentiate between arousals. A kid can move 10 times at night or in an hour at night, you know, but doesn't consider a sleep. None of the existing cameras will actually know how to differentiate between motion and behavior. Uh, so over time, we got this um, technology. And with my second kid, it was a much better experience. <laughs> You know, it wasn't like a number that I, I knew how much time you sleep at night and it helped me to manage and to be aligned on best practices with my partner. You know, um, in one of the demos, uh, I show an example that uh, I woke up during the night and I, my kid was a lad, my second kid was crying and I went to his bed and, you know, the trip was full of pacifiers, but he couldn't find the pacifier. And um, just my wife, you know, wrote a note next time, put all the pacifier in the corner. You know, she saw this event and I knew that this is the best practice. So you will know what to do next time. You know, this is just simple things that uh, life are full of details that Nanny gather for you. And, um, you know... During the night, I found myself, you are talking about my experience, okay? So during the night, I found myself that the only thing that I want to do is to go back to sleep. Well, I can't you know, you imagine. Walk, you wake up during the night, the kid is crying, you're trying to understand what I'm going to do next. I'm going to go out, I'm going to go down, I'm going to, I want to go back to sleep. I'm going to put headphones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of. And then you wake up in the morning and you don't remember nothing. You don't remember even if you, you were the one that walked to the kids or it was your wife. And you want to make decisions for the day after. So how can you actually do it without Nanit? You won't take uh, the best decisions. Uh, manage the sleep time for your kid. Just memorize those events for you in a way that, and we organize it as a design problem. How to do, organize it in a really clear way, uh, what we have reached. But... Uh, and then you can, you know, have the strategy for the day after. And it's an ongoing process. Every time your kid reaches a development milestone, every time you took him for a travel, there is a change in the sleep patterns oh. that you need to figure out. Uh, yeah. You know, most of our um, employees um, have kids. There are some without, there are some with. We have more kids uh, in the company uh, than employees, if you count the... Uh, <laughs> Uh, so we are very parent-oriented, uh, uh, but it is nice to see the guys that do not have kids, you know, how they understand it, you know. Being a parent is a change, it's a life-changing event, and, and uh, uh, I'm so happy that they will have an edit uh, when it will, uh, they have an edit uh, when they will have their first kids. Well, even just hear you describe it, I was trying to think of, okay, so if I didn't have a nanny, what would I do? And it would almost be, I mean, certainly not impossible, but how you're not going to write down everything and spread. It would be like a job. Yeah. Parents are writing logs. Not all parents, but parents are trying to understand the routine, the sleep routine of their kid. When is the best time to put him to bed? How much time you tell him to fall asleep? Uh, when he wake up, what actually is happening? Should he sleep with a blanket or without a blanket? What does he actually do to fall asleep? Sleep association, does he use this or that? You know, they are, they are into it. You know, they are parents. They need to do it. You know, and, and we are not replacing parents. 
You know, we are just giving them the insight to help them be better parents uh, as they are. You know, um, this is the... And when it comes to your experiences, as probably for many on your team as well, because you're a user of the product, do you ever have to pull yourself back? Yeah, uh, this is a very uh, hard thing to do. I must tell you, I'm so involved emotionally, and uh, you know, in every piece that was there, it was a decision that was drawn from something that happened to me or to someone that I saw. Uh, but it's important to to take a step back. We have a UX specialist that we're working with. He's making the interviews with the beta testers. I used to do it until some time, and then I was finding myself that I'm a bit biased to to make them. So it's very very um, important. You need just it's about awareness um, and help have the you know the customers they drive the product. Mm -hmm. You know there are things that they don't know, and it's okay if you are you know taking some of their things in a way that you will get it, but we are not in the stage to show you this yet. For instance, we do not have a sound for a long time in our product. Um, and they are complaining, there is no sound, there is no sound, there is no sound. But there will be sound at some stage and uh, that we start to, to test. And uh, you need to, to know how to, to uh, manage it in the development process. There is also a lot of challenges in this product. You know, it's a consumer product, definitely. But it has hardware, it has algorithms, uh, it has software, like the back end. Uh, each kind of the sides have different kind of risk, uh, innovation risk, product risk, business risk, you know, and each one of them work in a different way of development and you need to make all of them to work together and integrate into a single point in time. Uh, it is very challenging. So you need to be careful in how you are working with customers in a way that um, will converge at the end to a final product. Whether it was on, you know, a conversation that you was, had with someone who is a beta tester or someone on your team because everyone's using the product, do you have a favorite Nanit story? Favorite Nanit story? Of a family using it. Yeah. Um, I told you about the story of mm -hmm. the, um, um, Kim that you, she um, allowed us to use her, uh, uh, her name. Um, that we actually, um, uh, she saw that their kid is uh, turning side for the first time uh, using Nanit. It was very emotional. So this is the first thing that I, I remember that we, she just uh, wrote it on, on, on Facebook and it was uh, an exciting monument. I know that there are other beta testers that used to like the high-end alternatives and just stopped using them. You know, it, it was fascinating. Like, you know that they are using the high-end cameras, security cameras that you can think of to watch their kid. And then they say, you know, I just stopped using it. Why? Because I have the best view and I have this whole information in one place that I just don't need them and um, this is uh, another beta testers that uh, that uh, told me this and it was like you know um, I knew that it would happen you know but uh, seeing it happen it is uh, it's something uh, when you're working day in and day out it feels good to just get yeah. that reinforcement both on a product level of you know I don't yeah. have this other one and then also on the emotional level I'm sure that's really special yeah, it's a must have. Before we go, Asaf, I'd love to just talk about computer vision and machine learning for a second in general. You're an expert in the space. You've been in the space for a very long time. What's happening right now? Um, the nice thing about computer vision is that those are really hard problems to solve. Uh, this is why uh, I have a job. No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, when you put a camera, let's say here, it's a really hard problem. There are many moving objects. Um, you see uh, like transparency and reflections and outdoor and indoor. Um, and think about random places when you can put a camera and try to understand the scene. 
it is very complex uh, to teaching a machine what it's actually see to understand the pixels. So when you approach this problem, you need to think about how to make the life of the algorithm easier, how to make those general problems, computer vision problems, and make them less general. Um, this is what you are doing when you are designing hardware, algorithm and, and hardware together from inception. So you are having a bird eye view when you see a crib, when all mattresses in the world are of the same size. And you can make assumptions on the model in a way that allow you to solve those problems at high, high precision. And we're actually the first that are doing something like this in the consumer space. And on this aspect, Nanit is very different from any other product that you see there. Uh, because if you are having a camera already done, uh, you cannot actually do much. Uh, because the problem that you are trying to solve is really, really hard. Uh, so uh, in this aspect, we are pioneers. Uh, we're also bold in setting those goals of uh, uh, creating those analytics and technology. Um, I can say that also the software challenges that we are dealing with and dealt with are enormous, like running those algorithms in the cloud in close to real time, pipeline, image processing, video. We have done it. Uh, in a way that will be uh, uh, efficient enough to provide it to consumer. And this is a huge challenge that we also solved. Um, on top of this, you are building a camera, and high-end camera with all the functionality uh, that I told you. Um, this becoming like the, you know, uh, the Tesla of baby monitors. And so, I'm so glad you mentioned that. So one more question. Just kidding about the last one. I have seen so many different names for Nanit, one of which is the Tesla Baby Monitor. What's your favorite way to describe it? You know, I, I like to look at it as a self-driving car. I think it's the best comparison. You know, drivers, you know, the goal when you enter a car is to reach from a place to place. And where it is a self-driving car, it's a totally different experience, but the purpose is the same bringing you from place to place. Parenting is, is the goal, you know, of a parent. Uh, and the camera with our capability is like a car with a self-driving car um, uh, that can bring you a new set of experience and capability and information that will help your, uh, navigate your way in, 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 in uh, parenting in a much better way. Um, I love it. I'm so grateful that we got to have you on the show today and give everyone a glimpse of what you're working on. Like you shared, I'm not, like I shared, I'm not a parent, but I'm so excited about what you guys are doing. For those who are parents or no parents, what's the best way for them to stay up to date with you guys and then also place their pre-order? You can now go to our website and order a product that we will ship to you on September. If you'll do it before August 15th, and there will be a 30% discount. So just come on now and, and buy it. The price for the camera is 279 It's really um, a, a competitive price. And I recommend you all to go and buy it. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you.